Could I get everybody to stand except the family, please?
Come on, let's praise the Lord. Befitting for a homegoing celebration, I'm extinguished to hear the horn blow because, look here, if Eddie was here, Eddie would have been dancing in his own self. Amen. If you know the, the, the spirit in which we live and how we've come this far, and we know that this is a celebration of life. And if we're going to celebrate life, I think it is an honor that we give uh, reverence to life. Amen. Come on, let's give a hand for Eddie James Farrell. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Thank God for life. Thank God for life. Thank God for life. It tells us in the song that just said, we got to hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. We have come again to celebrate uh, our dearly beloved brother uh, life and to celebrate in memory of what he's been to us and to all of us. And as I look around and see this, uh, this place filled with people that shows you that there's some love. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, when I was coming in on 20, I was behind a convoy of Pharaoh folks from Alabama. Amen. So, so hey, guess what? Eddie will make you travel today. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. God is good. Amen. No matter where we find ourselves on the scale of life, we have to remember that God is still a good God. And, and, and if we look where he's brought us from and where we are today, we ought to just go on and shout, say amen. amen. All right. Amen. Scripture tells us, I will lift my, head, my eyes to the hills from which my help comes from. And we know that our help comes from who? The Lord. So again, I pray to this family and my prayers are with you all to instill and to bring you a joy in times of sorrow that God would be your comforting pillow to lay your head on. Because when we don't know what to do or what to understand, take it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Because guess what? If you can confide in him, guess what? He's the kind of uh, a, a father that won't tell your business. You can talk to him about anything that you want to talk to him about today. Amen. So we're going to celebrate life today. We're going to give homage and again uh, share in reflection and song and however we can to bring uh, uh, this family some comfort. Again, we want to encourage you all to pray for them. Keep them in, in your prayers and you know that God may again be with them throughout this difficult time. As I was sharing with one of the young men uh, the other day as I was over here, right across the street for another service, uh, we were telling that these, nowadays, funerals are our new uh, family reunions. They become so common now that we're seeing everybody every week now. Again, so just look around because we don't never know what tomorrow holds for none of us. We got to learn how to love while we still have breath in our body. Amen. And guess what? Whenever I saw Eddie, guess what he did? He showed me some love. Amen. I had the pleasure of meeting Eddie over, I guess, about 30-plus years now. Amen. He walked into my house when I was standing over there off of uh, Septum Road, and at that time, me and Eddie both were having a good time. Amen. I had plenty of the good stuff in my, in my counter. Amen. I'm, I ain't always been saved. Come on, somebody. And, and we found a conversation sipping over something real nice. Hey, well, wait, I'm, I'm, I miss y'all. I miss y'all. Amen. But we had a conversation, and we talked and had a chance to become acquainted with each other. And sometimes an acquaintance brings you to a fellowship and knowing somebody for who they really are. And no matter when or where I saw Eddie, or whatever occasion, it was always a good time. Amen. Amen. He even taught me how to uh, disguise what I was drinking in a bottle. Amen. Watch out. Y'all missed that. Amen. I love him. Amen. Come on, somebody. Give Eddie a round of applause again. Amen. 
Yes, sir. Now, now, the family have put together a very fine outline of programming, which we're going to do our very best to keep in accordance. Amen? Uh, we're going to have a selection. Peacock. Amen. Then we have scripture reading by evangelist Akiba Green and also evangelist uh, Jocelyn Jackson. Amen. Soup said this is a celebration of life, right? Amen. So everybody take an opportunity to say thank you, Lord. 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 I give honor to God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who's the commander in chief of my life. Amen. To all the esteemed ministers of the pulpit, my co-laborers in the journey. I'm gonna bring the Old Testament scripture to you all, and then we're gonna have Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength. My Lord, do we ever need him? And an ever-present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, 
though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. I'll say that again. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the most high dwells. God is within her and she will not fail. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in an uproar. Is that not true for today? Kingdoms fall. Is that also not true for today? But he lifts his voice and the earth will melt. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolation of his earth, of, of, I'm sorry, the desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield and the fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. These are daughters, amen. amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am going to be reading in your hearing this morning. This is it's a celebration, but it's kind of kind of hitting home. Um, I've known Eddie for all of my life. 48 years. So, um, but I'm going to be bringing the New Testament word. Um, I'm going to be reading from Romans 8, starting at verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together unto now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even when we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For where a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? For if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And one more scripture, and we know, and we know, and we know, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did, did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. May God add a, a blessing to the reading 
of his word. Amen. 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 It's Miss Alma. She's going to take us to the throne of grace in prayer. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. But before I do my prayer, I'd just like to read something right quick. Justification. Jesus was delivered over to death for our sin and was raised to life for our justification. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Though through him through whom we have grant, have gained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Could we bow our head, please? Our Father, the omnipotent almighty God, a wonderful God, a holy God, a God who sit high and look low, a God who cares, a God who is faithful, a God who is true, a God that is worthy to be praised. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity of seeing Eddie right now rest until you come. But right now, it's, this is not about Eddie right now because he's already resting. It's about us who are left. It's about us who need to get it right because without Jesus, we can't make it. So, Lord, we lift your name on high, and we thank you for giving your life that we might have life. We thank you for being a merciful God, a faithful God, almighty God, a God who's watching over us, sent forth his angels to protect us, fighting for us, bringing us back to him. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus our Savior and Lord, to continue to guide our hearts, to do those things which is pleasing in your sight. Not about us, but about you. For you are our light and our salvation, and whom shall we fear? You are the strength of our life. Whom shall we be afraid? And you told us, let not our heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. But trust in you with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. We thank you, Jesus, for sending forth your Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth. We thank you for the power that you have given us. And you told us the Lord is at our side. We will not fear what man can do. What can man do unto us as we honor you and praise you? Bless each and every heart here, Lord. And let us not leave this place without making it right with you. Let us not leave this place and just going back doing the same thing that we were doing before. Because you're coming back. And you told us to wait on you and be of good courage. And you will strengthen our hearts. So we bless the Lord, oh, our soul. And all that is within us, we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May, amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen. Um, at this time, it calls for reflection and remarks. And this young man to my left and to your right is a son. Uh, I'm going to say alhamdulillah. That means all praise to God. See, we can find a fashion to find a common source. And if you know who God is, amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. There's only one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He, and guess what? He rules in the battle of all of our lives. 
And just as the young lady just said, it would be befitting that you find a place to get your life right. Amen. amen. Come on, amen. No, they ain't trying to preach that. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Uh, many of you may know me as Little Eddie. I'm only Little Eddie when Big Eddie's in the room. <laughs> For the past couple of days, I've been getting condolences and well wishes and um, sorry for your loss. Let me say that I have lost nothing. For the past 30 years, I prayed that God would keep my parents alive in order for me to get out and to say thank you, to spend time with them, to make memories, and to let them see the man that I become. And I was able to do that with my dad. So again, I lost nothing, but gained a lot. I was able to spend time with my dad. We did things together, made memories, and I was there for him um, in his last hour. So you can ask for no greater honor if there was a greater honor. So you're gonna have plenty of people come up and tell you the, the things about my dad, the memories and whatnot, but I wanna talk about the meeting while we're here. My dad had an appointment. He had an appointment that he had to keep. He couldn't delay it, and he couldn't speed it up. So that appointment is what brought us here today. And that appointment is a reminder that each one of us also have an appointment. So what they tell you when you prepare for an appointment, that you make sure that you bring your best, that you prepare. So the question is, what are we doing to prepare for the appointment that we're all going to have one day? So I just want to be a reminder of we have an appointment to prepare ourselves for that appointment. Amen. And we do so by making sure that we take care of ourselves and we take care of those we love. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Distinctly. Seekingly spoken from a son. Amen. Amen. You know, those are privileges that you get from seeking a higher power. God granted him the provision to come home. Amen. And to spend time. Amen. Amen. You ask, seek, and knock. You got to do something. Amen. To get in front of God. Amen. Um, it also calls for this time remarks from uh, family and friends uh, to the family's request. Amen. I just took my pill. My knee's feeling pretty good right now, amen. So then please, I, mean, I, I can move a little bit, amen. Not real fast. Don't go over two minutes. Don't let me come running at you, amen. Hey. <laughs> amen. It's all fun and laughter, but please be respectful of the family wishes to try to keep your mark. You can't tell a life story in two minutes, amen. If you want to talk to the family, call them at a later date. Let them know what you want to talk about. Amen. But be respectful and give them two minutes of service. And for those of you all who have your phones on, if it ain't the Lord call them, please don't answer. Cut them down. Amen. Amen. Cut them down. Cut them off. I mean, we don't need interruption from the phones going off. Amen. Just be respectful at this time. Amen. Amen. So if you want to make remarks, again, make your way to my left and your right, uh, to the mic that's standing out here and make your reflection. Again, please be respectful of the family. Amen. I feel you, bro. I feel you. Don't say that. Amen. I am the one. 
My daddy had you. But I've got to say this here. We come here to celebrate my brother. He was a baby. He was a baby. But you better believe he had, he had a voice that you're going to hear it. Well, you won't hear it or not. He's you, going to tell you something to let you go. You're going to hear him. I told him many times, I said, oh, you, you I said, I said I'm, I'm the only daddy you ever seen. He looked at me, but you ain't my daddy. <laughs> I don't care what I come up with, including serving the Lord, he got a word. <laughs> I said, Ed, do you pray? He said, do you? <laughs> I said, okay. But I'm going to come to cut it short now. Yeah. On that Monday, I come down. We're from Alabama. If y'all don't know that, it's Greaves, Alabama. And uh, I was there the following Monday. Walked in there, and everybody was like in there, sitting around. I said, where's my brother at? Sitting around there. Walked in there and looked at him. Yeah, all them pretty shoes there hanging up there. I said, uh-huh. I said, I got one of them. He looked back down at me and said, uh-huh. You know. I said, Eddie, this R.C. He said, I know you. I said, uh-huh, you know. I was seeing his time was just about up. On that Tuesday, I was in my kitchen. Come and visit me. She said, how do you know? I said, I felt the spirit. See, we we born again. We we feel with the Holy Ghost. Y'all 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 probably watch that now. We 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 ain't here just shaking and jiving. We true. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm about to break it regular straight because people look like you're kind of funny. I've been born again. Come on. All right, and I don't care who know it. But now, let me, I'm going to cut it off short now. Eddie, they said, little Eddie. So when I come in, in the picture, they said, no, you're Eddie Jr. So y'all forget about the little Eddie. If you Eddie Jr. or Eddie Sr., already gone on. Forget about, he already gone. Eddie Jr. is still here. Tyrone, they're still here in the family. Let me tell y'all something. If everybody will serve God, there won't be no crying going on. There won't be no sadness going on. Yeah. There'll be joy yeah. forever. Thank you so much. I mean, I got so much I can tell, but I can't tell it now. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, family, friends, loved ones. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Eddie, I've been knowing him in my entire life. He was a beautiful, wonderful person, but don't never cross him. <laughs> I've seen some good times and I've seen some bad times. The good times, he always made me happy. Bad times, I never went around. I want the family to know his soul is gone, but his spirit within us. And may God bless you all, and I love you all. I met Eddie maybe about 10 or uh, 12 years ago. I'm the landlord, and me and Eddie got to be brothers on that same day. You ever meet a man walking on two feet, gonna be a man? Eddie was one. Now, I don't know nothing about Eddie. I'm just saying 12 years back, but I'm talking about 12 years forward. You couldn't be the better man. You couldn't be the better man. And I want the kids, well, ain't no kid, I want your children to know that you had a wonderful father. One thing he would do, if, you, if he say something, go on to the bank with it. He is just that good a man. And I'm going to tell you, you know, I should be sitting over there too because I feel though I am part of the family. He, he come from a big family just like I come from a big family. And we always would sit down and talk. The love of checkers. I call him, we, he's back in the country, we call him Pooh. I can't beat him. I beat him every once in a while, the checkerboard. 
But now he had a fan live across the street there. I never did forget his name. And now they were some, they were some checker player. But I would just always go over there and get whipped and I'd go home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was, he was a good checker player. And I think he tell me, and this one thing I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it on that. He would tell me, he said, Milton, is you in the neighborhood? I said, no. He said, well, when I want to tell you then, I got your rent. Now he gonna call me. I didn't have to call him, he called me. He said, well, I'm gonna go play cards. Now if you're gonna come around, if you ain't coming around the next hour or so then, you know, I may run on my run and play cards or uh, play check or somewhere. I said, well, okay then. I said, I'll tell you what, just go on and do that. And when you get back home, just call me. That's what he would do. He was just a good man, period. And I'm gonna need, we gonna need more like Eddie. If y'all men, I, I call you, well, I ain't call you no boy, but I'm just saying, but if you would like your, stay like your daddy, it would be a beautiful world. And then I got a chance to meet AJ and me, him got off on a good start and we're just family peoples, man. It, it wasn't no, it ain't no such thing as a friend, it's a family people. And uh, like I say, everybody like Eddie, the world would be in better shape. I never had to give him a receipt for rent, and I never had to cut my, uh, cut my money for seeing him on time. That's the way we were. He told me, he said, why you don't give me no read? That's all, it's all right, no problem. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you, he was a good man. If y'all follow your daddy, I'm gonna tell you, everything will be fine. Thank you so much. Greetings, everyone. My name is Lisa. I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Eddie in 2016. His beautiful sons, his beautiful girlfriend, and his entire family. You do not meet people like Mr. Eddie nowadays. I grew up old school where your neighbors were your friends, but now things have changed. But he showed my daughters, my grandson, and I unconditional love. And I will always hold him dear to my heart. And as they spoke, his spirit and love will always be with us. So hold on to those beautiful moments that you shared with him, as will I, and know that the most high divine doesn't make a mistake. Give thanks and love to everyone. Peace. Good afternoon, everyone. I just, I know Eddie from when he went up, the children were real small, and he was dating my sister at that time. And on, on this time when he was like, we was having a family reunion, you know Eddie, he's always talking, he's always got something in his hand. But these last few um, years, last, I think last year we prayed for Eddie. He was going through some hard time and he was feeling pain. And we prayed for Eddie. The doctor had gave up on him, told him that he, w he was in six months. But God spared him one year to get it right with his son and get it right with me. That was awesome. So we just thank God for Eddie having the opportunity to get it right. And now it's time for us to get it right. Be blessed. Let the church say amen. amen. Let's say that again amen. one more time. Amen. First, we want to give all thanks to God, our Lord and Savior. Also to the wonderful pastor here for 
allowing us to be in here and saying some very inspirational words. I'm going to say my uh, 15 minutes right now. <laughs> I just want to say that, you know, Uncle Eddie was the life of the family. There's no one in the family like Uncle Eddie. There's some that resembles Uncle Eddie. He got brother that resembles him. He has sons that look just like, but there's nobody like Uncle Eddie. Anytime something happened in Alabama, even though he's in Georgia, if something happened in Alabama, you better look around Uncle Eddie and Uncle Jay right there. And even if you fall down, if you skin your elbow enough, Uncle Eddie and Uncle Jay is going to be there. This is a day that I was not looking forward to, but I remember something but just like what his son said. If we could just see where he's going and just see that beautiful place, that when the only uh, tears that would be coming down today would be tears of joy. I was asked to do a selection, and ironically, the song that was chosen, I remember, was after my daddy had passed. I, was, I remember riding on the road, and the song come on the radio. I had never heard it before. And I'm going to tell you, it took me a long time to get through listening to the words of the song, Dance With My Father. For the family and for myself, for all of you that have experienced this Back when I was a child Before life removed all the innocence My father would lift me high And dance with my mother and me And then spin me around Till I fell asleep then up the stairs he would carry me And I knew for sure I was loved If I could get another chance Another walk, another dance with him I'd play a song that would never ever end how I love, love, love to dance with my father again. Shoo -do 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 -do. Yeah, listen. When I and my mother would disagree, yeah, to get my way, I would run from her to him he'd make me laugh just to comfort me then finally make me do just what my mama said later that night when I was asleep he left a dollar under my sheets I never dreamed that he would be gone from me now if I could steal one final glance one final step just one more dance with him I'd play a song that would never ever end cause I love 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 to dance with my father again Sometimes I listen outside the door And I'd hear how my mama cried for him I'd pray for her even more than me I'd pray for her even more than me I know I'm praying for much too much, but 
could you send the only man she loved? I know you don't do this usually, but the Lord, I'm dying. I want to dance with my father again. Every night I fall asleep, and this is all I ever dream. Yeah, yes, I want to dance with my father again. Wonderfully done. The remission that we can see that we know that the words of that song were very touching and daring, and I guess we all can feel the affection of it again to know that being able to, if we all could go back and change, that's in the time, but we can't. But we, you know what we hold on to? We hold on to memories. We hold on to things that draw us closer to remember the good times of of life and where we even enjoy at times with each other. So again, my, uh, my condolences with this family that God would comfort you in times like this, but I want to give you some assurance through the word of God because when I have nothing else to hold on to, I can find an assurance through the word of God. And, and just to share with you all, I thought it was befitting for me to uh, I was on vacation. We were down on the Gulf of Mexico uh, just a few hours ago. And my wife and I drove about uh, six hours this morning to get back to Atlanta, cut our vacation short to be here for his services. Amen. And that's the love that we have for the family and for Eddie as long as well. Amen. So we want to, again, show you that, again, we care. Um, I want to bring some words of you that many of you may have heard. It is familiar tone. It comes out of Isaiah. Uh, chapter number 6, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. Isaiah 6, verses 1 uh, through, well, I'm going to do 1 through 3. Amen. Here's what it reads. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim, each one had six wings, with, two, with twain had covered his faith, and uh, with twain had covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. I'm going to write five. And, he, and, the, and, the, that, and the post of his door moved, and the voice of him cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King and the Lord of hosts. May God add a blessing to the hearers and the readers of his word. If I can raise from a topic to preach from for a few minutes, I'm going to be all day long, I can hold you, amen. Death doesn't get the last word. Death doesn't get the last word. Can I bring you some familiarity about who King Uzziah was? He was king at the age of 16. He was uh, um, on the throne of, uh, on a, in another power uh, for 50 years. He was a, a good man. But, but, but pride caused him to be unfaithful. And his disobedience caused him to be put and brought to the skinliness on his body. With leprosy and then ultimately to die. But his death gave hope to Isaiah because he saw the Lord and accepted a calling. And here's what I want to encourage you all. In the year that Eddie died... 
Can you see the Lord high and lifted up? Can you find the glory in where we see the goodness of Christ being manifested? I'm going to give you three things that support this statement. One is salvation. Two is heaven. And thirdly is a resurrection. Let's take these in, in retrospect. Why does salvation uh, say that death doesn't get the last word? Because Jesus came to restore which was lost. As I sit, uh, stand here and look around, there's a lot of lost people still in this world, amen, amen. who don't know the perimeters of who Christ is and have the audacity to find help in his resources, amen. amen. He came to seek and save the lost, and guess what? Again, they're all around us. That's you, that's me, amen. He came to bring life to a dying, sinful world. We all have sinned and come short of the glory, amen. If you're a perfect being, guess what? I'm going to excuse you. You can go on and leave right now. Uh, you can go on and walk down heaven streets. Amen. But guess what? I stand there. All of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. There are no perfect beings nowhere. The only one who was perfect, he's going on. His name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. So you, uh, you have to have faith in Christ to have everlasting life. Your jobs can't do it. Your 401 can't give you it. Your spouses can't get it, give it to you. Your family and friends can't assure you this thing. But you got to have faith in God. Faith is the key. Faith is the thing of, 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 of something hopeful that you never experience. If there's no faith, there is no provision to see the outcome in which we walk through life. Amen. Number two, heaven says death doesn't get the last word. Why? Because salvation changes our destination. If you've been going to, down road uh, uh, A and you found some help on road B, you don't want to go down road A no more. Amen. Because something has changed your life. There are some times we come through uh, to a stop sign and we either get to go left or right. You have to choose what direction you want to take. It is so easy to take the wrong world. It's so easy to go to hell. You can be mad as hell, selfish as hell, greedy as hell, unrighteous as hell, devilish as hell. It's easy to go down that hellish road, amen. As a matter of fact, hell will come knocking on your door sometime, tell you, come on in. But it is very intangible that to find yourself doing the right thing. Because the right thing puts you in the path of destiny. That one day you will see Jesus. Now, I don't know about you all, but I want to see the man who died that I can be set free. I want to see the man who gave his life to save a sinner like me. Oh, good God Almighty. So I'm in the West End. You know, I went to school right around the corner at Sylvan High School. I, I sold crack in, the, in the apartments right over in Harris Home. I'm going to tell you about me. I, I, I went to a script club right down there on, uh, y'all, I ain't, none of y'all went with me, amen. Right down the street, amen. Sin was all around me, but I had to find something to draw me from off road A to road B to change my destination, amen. I'm talking about me today. Because I can be truthful about who I am and what God has done for me in my life. He's not respect the person. If you don't see God's glory in the death of our brother, how can you be lifted up to the next level? Here's what I want to tell you. There's something about life that hinges us that we got to do something from death, from, from being born to dying. Everywhere you go into the gravesite, there's a dash. Which represents what have you done? What have you done? You know, again, if you ain't putting no markers and being impactful in somebody's life, what are you doing in life? What changes have you made? You know, you, it's easy to go through life being oh, an all right person, but all right ain't gonna get you into heaven. What profits a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? I bid you. To find hope in God. Because here's what we know in the destination of our soul. There is uh, the ending of death and his power. The last enemy to man is death. Amen. 
But the saved go to heaven and the unsaved go to hell. Look here. Hell is real, y'all. Amen. Some people don't want to tell y'all that. Amen. They're going to sugarcoat it and put, 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 put parameters on it and tell you, well, it might not be real. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to try to have him on my side and not have him on my side. Amen. So I'm not going to speculate on what, whether or not it is or real. I'm much rather die with Christ in me than to die without him on me. Amen. So I say to you, to die is gain in Christ. But what is the man that, that goes through life and don't find assurance? Heaven is better than, than earth because heaven gives you a new body. It gives you a new outlook. There is no cirrhosis to live. There's no arthritis pain that we deal with. There's no heartaches and no conditions that we have to fall short to. Because the word tells me in heaven there is, every day is going to be Sunday. All right, come on somebody. Somebody done read that somewhere. Amen. Heaven says death doesn't have the last word. Why? Because he has prepared a place for us. In heaven. Love awaits those who have found assurance in Jesus Christ. He has gone on before us to prepare a place. The word tells us he prepared a place for those who will come after him that they'll be able to see him in the glory of his power. I want to see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Face to face. Thank you for all that he's done. Millions didn't make it, but I was one of the ones who did. Come on, somebody. Somebody say amen. 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 All right, let me know you're in here with me. Amen. Thirdly, and I'm almost through, resurrection says that death doesn't get the last word. There's a great guarantee in Christ's resurrection. Now, I know y'all going to be sitting around the table a little bit later on. Those cars going to come out. But you know there's a guarantee when you're sitting down playing spades. Amen. Y'all, y'all been there, amen. Some of y'all spades player. When, when it comes down to the last book, you take that last one and you stick it up on your forehead. That's that guarantee, amen. That I have won the game, amen. And here's the guarantee that if you get Christ on your side. There's a guarantee that there'll be a brighter tomorrow for you. There's a guarantee that tomorrow won't be your last day of seeing this time. But a guarantee that I will get up with Christ on my side. There's a guarantee that God will save my soul. There's a guarantee that you can be changed from who you were. If God can change me, good God Almighty, I know he can change you all. But you have to make a conscious decision. You know, insanity is doing the same thing and expecting the same result. All right. Amen. So y'all agree with me on that, right? So you got to make a change. You got to do something different. Amen. A guarantee of a savior. The guarantee of salvation. A guarantee of a new beginning. A guarantee of peace and love. A guarantee that God will always be with you. A guarantee that Christ is on my side. A guarantee that if I die for Christ, that I'll live again. See, many can't, there's some, some people who come through the ends of life and nobody can guarantee your life like that. The greatest men I've known, the ones who have the riches and money of stature and power, they can't guarantee you life. Only one can do that. You got to know who he is. Amen. Amen. I'm assured you there's a guarantee that he said he will never leave you or forsake you. So my encouragement to this family today that you will hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. And I'm almost through. Amen. I want to leave with you these three words. I saw the Lord high and lifted up at a time in my life when I thought I would not make it out. I called on the Lord from, a, from, from Wright Street Jail. 
Y'all come on now. I called on the Lord from Wright Street Jail, and he saved my soul. He took the taste of marijuana out of my mouth. He took the case of cocaine out of my mouth. He took and delivered me from him. He's a good God Almighty. He changed my life. Tell me that God can't do it. When I saw God lifted up in my life, everything changed in my life. Guess what? Even when I got out, I didn't even have to go pee in the cup. They gave me a job and said, come on and go to work. <laughs> Tell me God ain't good. He changed the perimeter of my life that I got saved and along with me, my family, began to get saved right behind me. Come on, somebody. Because I found a new direction in life because I wanted God on my side. And the same God that I serve today is available to anybody who don't know who he is. Amen. He can change your life. He can do it. So I encourage you with these few final words. Don't let go through life without remembering these things that you can't get back. A stone after it's been thrown, you can't get it back. A word after it's been spoken, you can't get it back. An occasion that after it's been gone by, you can't get it back. Now, I, I, I remember when we were over there celebrating, I think, Eddie's birthday, and everybody came in and looked just like Eddie. I thought everybody was twins and triplets. Amen. <laughs> and he didn't miss an occasion. He showed up with joy in his heart. He showed us how to laugh and have fun with family. So don't miss an occasion. Amen. You can never get back trust after it's been broken. And, and fifthly, time after it's gone away. These are the memories and the time that we hold dear to our life to believe that Jesus Christ is who he is. My encouragement to you today is to hold to God because in him I found an assurance. In him I found somebody to change my life. In him I found understanding to give me a brighter day. In him I found the new beginning that could change my life. In him I found an understanding that could give me hope for tomorrow. I found in him a way of understanding that all that I've been through, all that we've done, all that Eddie's ever done in life, God can forgive you for all that you've done. But you have to be willing to accept him as a personal Lord and Savior. I remember that the hope, y'all forgive me, the hope of a change could only come when you have done something different. Don't let this occasion cause you to miss salvation. So I'm, I'm going to ask you, man, I know, I know, I, I, the young lady stated again, we don't want you to walk out the same way you walked in. If you don't know Christ, amen, I'm gonna, I want you to do, right? you ain't got, I want you to stand up, and I want you to get our uh, verses loud, and guess what, we can come to Christ, and you, you ain't got to fall out, you ain't got to, we ain't got to jump up and sing kumbaya on you, amen, we ain't got to throw this all and water on you and fall down and get back up and raise you up again, amen, but you can do this simple thing. I'm going to ask you all to just close your eyes for a second. And if you don't know who Christ is, just close your eyes for me. Raise your hand. Close your eyes. If you don't know who Christ is, you are not assured that you have a heaven, a home in heaven. Don't, 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 don't be scared. Amen. God bless you, young man, in your, in your faith. Repeat after me these words. Father God, I accept you as a Lord and Savior. I believe that you died. And you rose again. And I confess that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Have me to be your own. 
in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Your confession have saved you. Confession opens up the ability to be accepted in Jesus Christ today. And I assure you that you have a home in Jesus. Amen. Today, your name has been wrote on the Lamb Book of Life that nobody can take away from you. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. I, I, I'm not going I'm not going to uh, uh, jump up in here to split. Amen. I just want to talk to you, man. It's time out for 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 show showboating. You got to be real with people today to let them know that God is real. And if you don't change your life, there is no tomorrow. Now, if you die today, guess what? You are having assurance that one day you'll see those who died in Christ. Scripture tells us those who 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 went down will come up first, and those who remain will be caught up. He's coming back. Amen. Is your house in order? You know it better than anybody do. Amen? Amen. I'm going to, uh, again, ask that Willie Walken professionals would come in and guide us through the remaining of our services. Uh, there have been a uh, the cemetery viewing, which is going to be at Lincoln. Uh, no, no, not Lincoln. Westview Cemetery. Amen. Uh, there has been a repast that's set up. Uh, for the family. This young lady who's sitting beside Tyrone, my God. I done ate so much of her food, amen. She done blessed me in so many ways, amen. God bless you, ma'am, in your endeavors to keep hope alive, amen. Thank you for being there beside this young man through the walk of life. And my prayer are with you that you may go stronger in him as well, amen. Tyrone. Eddie Jr. You got a name change today, amen. Another name change. God bless you all. Amen. amen. Willie Watkins and the professionals, amen. Come on in. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. We came here to do it to celebrate, to celebrate his life. First, give an honor to God and to you, Pastor, the family, have to say. Thank you for all your consoling words. What you have said to console this family, the family is simply say thank you. To the many, many friends who gather, the family also acknowledges you their appreciation for you coming and sharing in the passing one. What have you done, card flowers, just simply said a prayer. Your presence here means so much to this family, and for that, this family, thank you. To this family, on behalf of myself and Seth, we take this time to acknowledge to you our appreciation for you chosen to be in your funeral council during your hour of bereavement. And in doing so, we pray to Maury Platt for you to keep it true to one until you meet him again. May God bless you. Now, this is something we're going to do. I told you we're going to celebrate here. So, uh, uh, sir, I, I need a celebration song, okay? What you gonna, what you going to sing so I can sing along with you? Who? Pass me not, oh, Jim, to save a here. My own book. Y'all know that song. Now. Come on, that. Come on, that. Y'all taught that in kindergarten. Why is enough for thou calling to not pass me by? I'm calling you, Savior, oh, Savior, why don't you hear my, my arm, arm oh, cry, oh, why on thou art
Why don't you hear my arm cry? That's how we feel. Because you know why? We do not want the Savior to do what? Pass us by. Now, I know all of y'all knew that, but no, one of ten of y'all singing. Now, listen, we're going we gonna to do something else right now. Uh, you don't mind, do you, really? Thank you. You, you said what now? <laughs> yeah, y'all like that, y'all said? Somebody got to some, go somewhere? Somebody got to go? You got to go where I'm at? You got to go to house alone. Come on, go to the bathroom real quick. Because I want you to come back. We're going to hold it. We're going to hold everything when you come back. Hey, come in, come in, come in. Go this way right here. Go, go to shorter dips. Go to shorter dips. Right there, turn right. Turn right. And then go to the second door. To your right. Okay? And I don't think you, we're going we gonna to sing till you get back. Now, that's what it's all about. It's all about celebration. You know what? We, we forget about what we're doing. All right, you got to go to friend. You got to go? You gotta go? Where are you going? The bathroom this way. The bathroom this way. Well, let me let me tell you something. See, we, we forget about what this what if we do, do it biblically. Now when the person come into the world that we had to weep. Because you know, well, let me say this to you. We cry about whatever because they come in, that's what the Bible said. But we come into what? To a difficult time in life. Whatever so. Therefore, you say when the one go out, we celebrate his life. Because you know why? He got the victory. And that's what it's all about. We celebrate. It does not mean you can't cry. You still cry. You still weep. But after you get through weeping and crying, you got to get up and enjoy life. Because you know, he, he said he took the stain out of death. You understand? He said he took the stain out of death. So why be afraid of death? You're going to get out of here. 
you don't know when, but you need to do what? After everything done, he said, I came so how you have life, what? Lord, Lord have mercy. Somebody know the Bible, all right? So since he said I have life more abundantly, then we go, we're going to rejoice in the fact that he was placed here for whatever time God had in here. And that's why we're here, to help the family celebrate his life. Now, I, I said enough uh, saxophone. You got a song ready for us then? All right, let's get it. I want a hot. You know, what people say, y'all heard the preacher, you say, I want a hot number, all right? That's right, come on. Open your mouth. Where I'm going. I'm going up yonder, yes I am, I'm going up yonder, to be with my Lord. I'm going up yonder, yes I am, I'm going up yonder. My Lord, as God gives me grace to run this Christian race until I see my Savior face to face. As God gives me grace. Run this Christian race until I see my Savior face to face. Oh, oh I'm going up yonder. Yes, I am. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. To be with my Lord. Oh, 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 I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. To be with my Lord. Oh, oh, oh I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Well, the spirit shall see from trouble, and yes, I am. And every day will be Sunday, and the Sabbath shall have, shall have no end. Oh, weeping may do for a night, but I'm so glad that joy comes in the morning. Yes, I am. Oh, Lord, I'm going, I'm going, I'm yonder. To be with my Lord. Well, well, family and friends, let me just say this. I want to thank y'all for allowing us to do what we love to do, that celebrate the one life. Uh, we we have an honor. When you choose us to have in your service, it's not how much money you've spent with us, it's how well we're going to service you. Now, that's what, that's what we're all about. Let me, let me just say this now. Uh, when they say that song, I'm going up yonder, and they say I'm going up very soon, I end that because I ain't finna leave. I ain't ready anymore. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and you'll say that very soon, so don't make don't, don't work with me. I'm not just saying that because I ain't trying to rush out here at all. Uh, not no very soon, all right? All right, Reverend, you ready? You've been standing long enough telling me, shut up, come on out. Yeah, yeah, that's you stand there. Look at that. We're talking about a celebration of life. Just to share some laughter. All right, let me just do this. I need one, two, three, four. I need four flower ladies, please. Four ladies like to serve as flower ladies. I know I got enough ladies here. Thank you. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all all you've done for me blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you thank you Jesus for blessing me I just want to thank you forever and ever and ever for all all you done for me Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to thank you forever and ever. And ever for all, all you done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to thank you forever and ever and ever for all all you done for me blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Woke me up early this morning, started me on my way, put food on my table and Clothes on my back. I'm grateful, grateful, grateful. I'm grateful, grateful, grateful. I'm grateful, grateful, grateful. 
for all he's done for me. Glory and honor, 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 glory and honor. He's been so good to me. He's been so kind to me. Every day will I trust him. Every day will I praise him. Every day will I honor him. Every day will I bless him. Every day will I praise him. Every day will I exalt him. Blessings and glory and honor. And honor. Blessings and glory and honor. Bless his glory and honor. You've been so good to me. You've been so kind to me. Blessing me every day of my life. Giving me the strength to go on. Run on and see what the end's gonna be. Run on and see what the end's gonna be. Run on, see what the end's gonna be. Blessings and glory and honor. They all belong to you. Blessings and glory and honor. 